Hey guys, what's going on? Jab here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit more technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets because guys, today we have a very important update. As you guys can see, Bitcoin is currently trading below the 20 exponential moving average. Now, we haven't closed a candlestick down here just yet, but as you can see, Bitcoin is below the moving average that I use to determine when Bitcoin is in an uptrend or a downtrend. This 20 exponential moving average has never failed me. Bitcoin is always in an uptrend when it's above it, and it's pretty much always in a downtrend when it's below it. And the fact that Bitcoin is coming down here and testing this at the moment, and based on many other technical indicators that are making some very important changes based on those two, Bitcoin may be just a couple of hours away from starting a new downtrend. Guys, there's a lot of developments happening on our oscillators. There's a lot of developments happening with the 20 EMA. There's a lot of stuff going on with the strength of the bulls and the bears. We need to get to all of that in today's video. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, I think it's going to be a good one jam-packed with all kinds of technical analysis. Make sure you smash that like button. I want you guys to go down there and destroy that like button. I will buy you a new computer monitor. Smack the crap out of it. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, guys. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. All right, well, let's start down here on the hourly chart because as you guys know the old saying, the trend is your friend right up until it ends. And guys, it looks like the trend here on the hourly chart anyway has ended. Bitcoin had a very clear uptrend of support here that was defining the bottom of this rising wedge pattern that Bitcoin found itself in for quite some time here. Bitcoin was in this pattern. And guys, I've been talking about a bearish breakout on Bitcoin. I've been talking about a downtrend on Bitcoin for a very long time. I've been warning you guys that this was going to come at some point. I wasn't exactly sure when it was going to come, but I knew the warning signs were there. And I knew we needed to be prepared for it. So now might be the time. Nevertheless, though, Bitcoin did come down here. And yesterday it was testing this uptrend of support right there. And we did, in fact, break it. I was talking about how that about about how a couple of these bottoms look like inverse head and shoulders patterns like right there. And this kind of did also, but it wasn't to last. Bitcoin did eventually fall all the way down here to right around $7,700. We did, of course, have that fake out to 9K a couple days ago back at the end of May. But Bitcoin has not managed to retain that bullishness. We've actually been making lower lows and lower highs here. You can see this is a higher high. This is a lower high. Higher low, lower low. Guys, Bitcoin is very clearly in a bearish trend here over the last couple of hours. Don't let this ascending triangle fool you. This is a longer term pattern. If we get rid of these two patterns, then what we'll see is that Bitcoin's actually in a downtrend with a level of resistance right there and a level of support, something like that. Bitcoin is very clearly trending to the downside in the last several days. So one thing that you often find in technical analysis is that you will drag out your chart formation, such as that uptrend that I had there. You'll drag it out too far and you'll pay attention for it for too long. And eventually, it turns out that that's no longer the right technical indicator to be looking at, but you're still paying attention to it because it was relevant yesterday, but it's no longer necessarily relevant. Bitcoin has broken bearish out of it, and its new pattern right here would actually be a would actually be a descending, expanding wedge right here, which Bitcoin is falling out of. It's not really a wedge because it's, uh, it, it's, it's growing, but uh, that's, a, that's pretty much what we're looking at right now. And the fact that Bitcoin has broken this uptrend of support right here is significant for more reasons than just the fact that it's broken an uptrend of support. Guys, this has led to several major developments on the longer term charts for Bitcoin. One of the most important, although certainly not the only one, we'll discuss many more of these here in a second. One of the most important of these developments is the fact that Bitcoin has come down and started to test this 20 exponential moving average. As you guys can see, yesterday's candlestick came down and tested it. But in today's candlestick, we opened above it. We're currently below it. Bitcoin has a long lower wick right here, which does indicate bullish strength, at least for the time, kind of, not exactly. It depends on how you read that. Sometimes a long lower wick can indicate bullish strength. Sometimes it can indicate bearish strength. In this case, because we're testing an important level of support, it would indicate bullish strength. But for the time being anyway, that doesn't mean that we're not going to break the 20 exponential moving average. This, what we're looking at right here, is what I like to call a decision point. You guys have probably heard me and Hubert, who is in the background, talking about decision points in a lot of videos. They're very important. You see them crop up all the time. It's a time where Bitcoin is either deciding if it's going to go bullish or if it's going to go bearish. Are the bulls going to be the ones that pull out or the bears going to be the ones that pull out the victory? Who's going to be the one that is able to be stronger? Which faction is going to take control of the market? And this is one of those decision points right now. What happens in the next day or two? is going to determine the next couple of months, at least the next month or so, maybe three maybe three weeks or four weeks on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin does come down here and decide that it wants to break below the 20 exponential moving average, the rally's over. Guys, let's go ahead and measure this real quick to remind you how long we've been in this rally. Bitcoin has been in a rally for 116 days. We're still 140% up from the bottom, around 130%. Bitcoin has done amazing things right now. Bitcoin does not go on rallies this long for very, for very often. Bitcoin just simply doesn't do it. You have to go back to the beginning of 
2017 to find the last rally that was this long. Guys, this is why I've been saying for the last couple of weeks that there is going to be a downtrend. It's going to happen. We're going to have a correction. People are getting so hyped and thinking just because we started a bull market that Bitcoin is going to disregard technical analysis entirely and that Bitcoin is going to just go to the freaking moon. That's not the way it works. Bitcoin has to have a correction. And guys, I'll be the first to say, maybe it won't be here. Maybe Bitcoin will bounce and maybe Bitcoin will start moving to the upside again. Maybe that will happen. I don't want to discount that entirely because it can happen. But there's a lot of red flags and warning signs coming up, cropping up right now about this. Let's go ahead and dive into some of them. One of the first I want to bring to your attention would be this uptrend on the daily RSI. You guys have been watching this for a very long time. I even talked about this in yesterday's video. I said how Bitcoin has come down here and tested this uptrend once, twice, thrice, force, and on the fifth time, it looks like Bitcoin has finally broken it. Guys, Bitcoin has been above this uptrend of support for seven months since back here in December. That's a very important piece of market structure. If you're in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, we talk market structure a lot in that course. We talk about, we have an entire video on market structure. It's a very important concept. When market structure is broken, as I say in that video, typically what you find is that it's indicative of some kind of much longer term change or trend reversal or some kind of major implications for the market. The fact that Bitcoin has broken this uptrend of support right here on the RSI that has held for a very long time is indicative that something major is about to happen because when you see market structure be broken, especially long term powerful market structure like that uptrend on as important an interval as the daily chart, then typically you're going to see some kind of major shift in the market sentiment or in the direction of the market. Something big normally happens. For example, when we broke $6,000 to the bullish side, when we broke it to the bearish side, when Bitcoin had a golden cross, all of these are major changes in market structure for Bitcoin and they all result in longer term, very powerful implications depending on the, the, the importance of that change in market structure. And this uptrend on the RSI is not the most important thing ever. It's not like we broke $6,000 again to the downside. It's not that important, but this is powerful. A lot of people are paying attention to it and it is going to carry some weight with it. So that could be one of the catalysts that really initiates this new downtrend. Perhaps it would force Bitcoin below this 20 EMA. Guys, remember, I'm recording this at 9:10 in the morning. You can see the date the time right down here. Bitcoin is a very uh, Bitcoin's a 24-hour market. The majority of the United States of America is barely awake. So we'll see what happens today. I want to see what happens over these next couple of hours if Bitcoin bounces here and starts moving to the upside again or if we do crash. Like I said, I'm not exactly calling bearishness right now, but I know we're going to have some bearishness in the next month or so, and this is our decision point. If we decide to break bearish here, then we're going into a downtrend. We need one more confirmation of it. That's all we need. Speaking of confirmations, let's go ahead and take a look at some more of these oscillators because they're not looking great for the bulls. Bitcoin's MACD is looking ridiculously bearish right now. As you guys can see, we're seeing some major, major red candlesticks down here on the histogram. These two lines, our MACD line and our signal line, are very far apart at the moment, and they are most certainly in a crash mode. We saw the cross back here. Normally, crosses are lagging indicators, but at this point, it looks like this was actually a predictive indicator. We've been talking about this cross on the MACD for quite some time. We've been talking about the MACD here for the last several days as it started to go bearish. And this right now, a lot of times what you see in the MACD, stochastic RSI, RSI, a lot of times you'll see if they move a little bit, but it doesn't mean a whole lot. Like this right here is a fake out. But sometimes you just kind of get that gut feeling that it's moved enough that it means something. And right here, you can just kind of look at this and think, gee, that really looks like they're getting far apart. That really looks like the MACD line, the signal line are crashing. It really looks like they're spreading out a lot. It really looks like they're getting a lot of distance between them. And it feels like it means something. It feels like it means something a lot more over here. And contrary to what someone said in the comment section of a video recently, that is not the same thing as trading based on your feelings. It's trading based off of your instinct. That's a very, very, very important difference. It's a good thing to trade off of your instinct if you have trained your instinct, if you have trained your gut feeling as I talk about in the course. But if you're trading off of your emotions, Emotions, that's not a good thing. Trading off of your instinct, if your instinct is trained, is oftentimes one of the best ways to trade if you are an experienced trader. If you're not a very experienced trader, try to stick to those technicals. But if you know what you're doing, then your instinct is going to be one of your biggest assets in this market. More to discuss, guys. The next thing I want to point out is the weekly stochastic RSI. I've been discussing the weekly stochastic RSI for the better part of the last three months, ever since the beginning of March. This is a very, very important technical indicator that has obviously not been respected. And that's okay because stochastic RSI a lot of times will actually be disrespected as overbought and oversold signals will be. So that's fine. What you want to do when you're trading stoke RSI and RSI is you want to wait for the trend reversal. You want to wait for the actual movement to shift so that you can start getting signals. And we're very much starting to get a signal from the stochastic RSI. And the reason for that is because of what we're seeing here on the weekly chart. This looks absolutely horrendous to me, guys. 
guys, this does not look healthy for the Bulls. This does not look good by any stretch of the imagination. Take a peek at that. This looks absolutely terrible. If you watched yesterday's video, then you will know my opinions on this. Bitcoin's wicks down here are not looking great. Bitcoin having these long lower wicks, short upper wicks, having this kind of spinning top with a with a bearish uh, a bearish tint to it is not looking good. And this red cam this red candlestick right here just looks absolutely atrocious. If we bring up our Heikenashi candlesticks here, then we're also going to see that the Heikenashi is starting to get a lot less green. We're probably going to see that turn red next week if we continue moving in this direction. And because of that, like I said, stochastic R size starting to curve. And as I mentioned in previous videos, and as I talk about in the course, guys, the way that you want to trade RSI and stochastic RSI is not on overbought and oversold signals. Because if you had done that, then you would have sold your Bitcoin down here. This is a bad time to sell your Bitcoin. You don't want to be selling Bitcoin down here at 4K when Bitcoin went up to $9,000. The time you want to be selling your Bitcoin is when stochastic RSI starts to move. Wait for it to start moving. It's been glued up here to the 100 level for the last three months, but now it's starting to move. Give this another week, and then this is going to be a powerful signal. Let this get confirmed because this isn't confirmed. This weekly candlestick is only two days old, guys. So this can do just about anything it wants. It's not locked in right now. Wait for this to be confirmed and then see what happens next week. And this could be a very powerful longer term indication of some more bearish price action happening on Bitcoin. One more thing I want to talk about out here on the weekly chart before we move on is the 20 weekly exponential moving average. We've talked about the daily exponential moving average, but what of the weekly? Guys, this is a very important moving average out on the weekly chart as well. This is a very important moving average on just about every single interval, which is why there's a dedicated video to the 20 EMA in the course. Guys, this moving average also defines whether we're in a bull market or a bear market. Check out this bull market. Bitcoin never once went below this exponential moving average. It stayed above it for the entire duration. Now what we're seeing is very interesting here. Bitcoin is above the 20 exponential moving average, but if Bitcoin does have a crash and it pulls back to $6,000, by the time it gets there a couple weeks from now, that might actually result in a break of the 20 exponential moving average. Does that mean that the bull market is over? Not necessarily, no. It just means that Bitcoin might go below the 20 EMA for a little while and go down to $6,000, or it might come down here and bounce off the 20 EMA around $6,500 to $7,000 and use that as the bottom for this new downtrend that I believe we're forming. Either way, this 20 exponential moving average is something we're going to want to keep our eyes on. All right, guys. Well, now that we've gotten all that technical analysis out of our systems, now that we understand why Bitcoin is crashing, and now that we understand the importance of this movement and the fact that it may result in a longer term, more exacerbated crash here over these next couple of days, let's finally talk about price targets because I've been saying for a long time, I'll talk about price targets when the time comes. I'll talk about price targets when the time comes. Well, guys, the time very well may be approaching. So let's go ahead and discuss where I think Bitcoin will head if we do, in fact, see a crash here over these next couple of days. The first places that are obvious, we'll go ahead and talk about $7,000 is a big even. That's going to be a level of support that Bitcoin will probably have. Uh, Bitcoin also has a level of support down at $6,000. It also has a level of support on the 50 weekly, on the 50 daily moving average. All three of these levels are places that I would expect Bitcoin to at least take pit stops, if not actually stop entirely. The 50 weekly, the 50 daily moving average, excuse me, is a very powerful moving average that Bitcoin used to use as a reversal indicator quite a lot. If you go back over here in the 2015 market, in the 2016, 17 market, excuse me. Bitcoin would come down to the 50 moving average, it'd break it, it'd go down to the 200, it'd bounce, and, or the 100, excuse me, it'd bounce, and then get through the 50, and then it'd continue. But in our market, it is a very important technical indicator still, and there is definitely a chance that Bitcoin's going to come down here and test it. One thing I do want to bring up actually has to do with the weekly, uh, with the, excuse me, not the weekly, the, uh, the Fibonacci retracement. You guys know I am a fan of the Fibonacci retracement because a lot of times it is very powerful, and one of the most important levels on the Fibonacci retracement is the 61.8% Fibonacci level, and you mirror that over the halfway point, and that also becomes the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement level. Bitcoin right now is garnering support on the 23.6% level, uh, level on the Fibonacci retracement. Right now, we're kind of seeing Bitcoin come down here, and it's coinciding with the 20 exponential moving average slightly. It's a little bit higher than this level on the Fibonacci but it's close. If Bitcoin does crash, one of the places I expect it to stop will be $7,000. And one of the main reasons I expect $7,000 is because one, I have four reasons. One, excuse me, three reasons. Four, one, uh, $7,000 is a big even. It's a, no, it's a big number. I mean, it, it, it's simple as that, guys. Technical analysis is built around human psychology and people prefer to buy and sell around $7,000 flat than $7,437.69. It's just the people prefer to put their trades around bigger, even numbers. $7,000 for that reason will be a major level of support. Another reason, it coincides pretty well with this 38.2% level at the $6,923 level. If Bitcoin comes down to $7,000, it's also going to be garnering support close enough to this level to call that support. 
Also, if this does happen in the next three or four days or so, Bitcoin will likewise be getting support on the 50 daily simple moving average right here because this moving average is going to keep curving up and it's going to slow down just a little bit and it's going to look something almost exactly like that. That's what that moving average is going to extrapolate into looking like. And it's going to come up here right to this 7,000 level here over the next week or two. And if Bitcoin does go down to 7K, it's going to find support there. So guys, my prediction for Bitcoin crashing is that if it does break this 20 exponential moving average, the first pit stop on a technical, ana on a technical analysis standpoint should be at $7,000. And there are other reasons why we can say $7,000 as well, guys. We can come in here and we can bring out a level of support right here and find that $7,000 has been used as support rather recently. Right over here, Bitcoin came down and tested it. Right over here, Bitcoin used it as a level of resistance. And during all this time, Bitcoin was garnering support right around the $7,000 region. And I believe if we extrapolate this out, we can actually find that Bitcoin has some trading around it back in the day also. And as a matter of fact, we can look back here and we'll see that there has been a decent amount of trading here on the $7,000 level right here right down here at the $6,800 level, which is another very major level of support right over here. There's quite a lot of trading around the 6.8K to $7,000 region. If we move this down to 6.8K, uh, then you'll find all of a sudden it matches almost perfectly. Right here, we have the top of this inverse head and shoulders pattern. Uh, support, resistant, breakthrough, resistance, 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 blah, 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 blah. 6.8K is a very important level. And because it's close enough to 7,000, that's also going to help garner support at $7,000. So what am I saying here? Is Bitcoin going to crash a grand and go all the way down to 7K? Yeah, pretty much, actually. I think if Bitcoin breaks that fourth, uh, that 20 uh, exponential daily moving average, that we're going to go straight down to 3000 uh, excuse me, not $3,000, $7,000. If Bitcoin does break this and does confirm it, it close a couple candlesticks down here, I think within the next couple of days, we could be trading at $7,000. Now, because I've said that, since it's my responsibility to say this, I'm going to say it. Just because I said that, do not go out and make a trade just because of what I said. I have to be very careful with what I say because there's thousands of you guys watching, which I'm so appreciative of. But the sad thing is, is that sometimes people hear what I say and they go and make trades. And sometimes the market doesn't do exactly what I say. Sometimes I left my crystal ball in the other room like I did today. Sometimes the market is going to surprise you and you have to be prepared for that. Now, guys, if you're going to make a trade on this, here's what I want you to do. If you're going to make a trade, wait for it to break the 20 exponential moving average and confirm a break of it. What I mean by that is wait for it to at least open a daily candlestick below it, preferably close a daily candlestick below it. If you're going to make a trade on this 20 exponential moving average break, wait for at least the open of a red candlestick below it. Otherwise, hold off on a trade. Be careful. I don't want you guys making trades abruptly because even though Bitcoin would only be crashing $1,000, that's a 12% move on $8,000 on an $8,000 principle, and you can lose a lot of money, especially if you're using margin trading like I know a lot of you guys do. Be very careful of that. Always protect yourself. Like I said, this is a decision point right now. It's not a breakout just yet. Bitcoin is sitting at a critical moment in its history, in the next couple of weeks' history anyway. Bitcoin is deciding whether or not it's going to break bearish or if it's going to continue going bullish. There's a good chance that Bitcoin can bounce here and continue moving to the upside. We're going to have to see what happens. Like I said, it's a decision point. It's not set in stone yet. But if we do break out, I'm expecting one of our levels that we're going to go to is $7,000. And we're probably going to go a little bit lower than that as well. We might even go all the way down to 6000 but let's hold our horses before we put on any major trades. Don't go doing what Arrow Assassin 9 I remember your name this time, did and put your entire life savings into Bitcoin. If I remember, I'll flash his comment up on screen again. Don't do that. You will hurt yourself because if you do that once, you're probably going to do it again. And even if you make money this time, it's going to end up want, you're going to end up getting bit in the butt. And uh, that hurts. I'll tell you from experience, it's not fun. Anyway, guys, I do hope you did enjoy today's video. What I want you guys to do is I want you to go down and I want you to leave a comment telling me about how you smashed the crap out of that like button. Tell me all about it in the comment section down below. I want as much detail. I want it to be as graphic as you possibly can. Give me every single detail. I want you to explain it the same way Dwarf Fortress explains dwarves dying. I want you to tell me exactly how you absolutely destroyed that like button. And I also want you to go down there in the comment section and tell me what you'd like to see in a future video. Do you have a long-term technical analysis comment uh, for Bitcoin that you want me to do? Do you want me to an analyze a certain kind of pattern on Bitcoin? Do you want me to talk about certain technical indicators on Bitcoin? Do you want me to talk about what the long-term outreach on Bitcoin is? Give me some video ideas because I have some, but I would always love to hear your guys' ideas. I love getting feedback from the community so that I can use that feedback and uh, throw it right back at you in the form of videos that you guys hopefully enjoy. So tell me in the comment section down below what kind of videos you would like to see. 
please don't go down there and say, Jeb, I want you to do technical analysis on this rank 500 altcoin. I'm not, I'm not doing a whole lot of altcoin technical analysis, although I am going to be doing some more altcoin technical analysis on top 10 altcoins coming over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months anyway. I don't want to guarantee when that's going to happen, but I will be doing some more regular altcoin technical analysis on days where Bitcoin isn't doing a whole lot. So altcoins in the top 10, I'll be analyzing some of them again. I used to do that a lot more and you guys did enjoy it. So guys, like I said, give me some ideas for Bitcoin technical analysis stuff that you would like to see. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. One last announcement is that the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, that sale May 2019 is now over. We had literally about 100 of you guys join during that sale, which is absolutely crazy. The course price has now increased to $199. Guys, I still believe with every fiber of my being that it is worth every single penny. So guys, there will be sales in the future. If you don't want to buy now, then you can wait on those sales but that course price has increased. I gave us plenty of time. I hope you guys were able to get in. If you did get in the course, tell us what you think in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always, as Bitcoin rallies back up above $8,000 and makes me look like an idiot at the end of the video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.